Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Athena is a movie out now on Netflix. This is a movie that came out this year, 2022, directed by Romain Gavras. This is a French film. Uh, this is a movie about police brutality. This is a film that has a lot of long shots, which I am a huge fan of. A lot of smooth, slick camera movements. This is a movie that is, uh, because of those camera movements, really brings you in to this chaos that's happening in this movie. Basically, it's a movie about, uh, let me read the description. Hours after the tragic death of their youngest brother, in unexplained circumstances, three siblings have their lives thrown into chaos. Athena is basically an apartment complex in France where there are riots going down. Mainly because this child was gunned down, gunned down by a police officer. And this was the third instance of police brutality in the two months, in the last two months of the reality of this film. Uh, something that really is relatable if you live in the United States. Of course, Black Lives Matter was a huge protest during the pandemic after the murder of George Floyd by a police officer while multiple police officers just stood around and watched a cop murder an innocent man. And uh, it's something that happens pretty daily in the United States where unarmed men, women, and children are slaughtered, their lives are ended by the police, so this movie is very relatable, it, and it shows from the point of this family, these three brothers, from different perspectives, uh, what's going on. The, of course, police are surrounding this area. Uh, the many youthful kids in this area are protesting and fighting against the police uh, in this complex that is pretty much just turned into a war zone, uh, while multiple other protests are also going on around uh, the area as well f because of this exact same situation. But this movie, not only does it follow the three brothers, who are all older brothers, the kid was, that was killed was like 10 years old. It was a young kid that was killed, uh, assumably by the police. And... All of the other brothers are range in age. I would imagine it seems, if I had to guess, anywhere from their early 20s to somewhere in their 30s, these three brothers. And so it follows, the story follows what the events through those three characters are the camera follows at different points, as well as one of the police officers, one of the feds, as they call them. So I don't know if it's... Uh, state police or i don't know how france they kept referring to them as feds as well um but it gives you different sides of the the issue of what's going on and like i said lots of long takes the first the opening shot of this movie is 11 minutes long it follows you from uh the one of the brothers who is in the military He's walking into an area where he's going to be part of a press press uh, junket to talk about his brother being killed, assumably by the cops. They want the names of the police officers involved. Uh, and it's, so it's him walking into this area. Then chaos breaks out in the press area, which I don't I, th I think the it was held at the police station. And then it goes into the police station being uh, attacked by these kids that are protesting uh, and it's following the younger brother now and then they get into a van and they take the van to the Athena housing complex and it's all one long shot 
going in and out of buildings, in and out of cars, in and out of the van, in and out, like a lot of high speed stuff. And everything is so smooth, so slick. It is. This is a movie where multiple times I was catching myself not breathing, not blinking, just because I was so sucked into everything that was going on in this movie because of the long shots, because it's like nonstop action and you are right there with everybody seeing everything that's going on the way this camera captures all of the different things as it's just floating through all of the chaos that's going on people running at high speed like just the steadiest of shots as they're clearly running their ass off like amazing amazing cinematography amazing camera work the story is brutal the story is very relatable uh the end of this movie which i'm not going to say right now i'll talk about later when i get to spoilers but the end of this movie kind of felt like a i don't know it's an interesting end but in the end you see the truth about what happens because one of the big questions is did the police actually kill this kid because their their whole thing is we want the names of these kids because as we see in the United States, cops are lie about stuff all the time. They get away with lying about stuff. The media tends to just take whatever story the police give them as truth. And there's very little investigation that goes on. And any investigations that do happen generally are headed up by the police themselves. So, of course, they never find any fault in the things that they do. Uh, unless it's something like George Floyd where a cop is caught on camera and there are global protests. It's one of the few times cops will ever get charged with the crime, which it took forever for him to get charged, uh, and actually be found guilty of the crime of murder. Because uh, most of the times, cops will just lie about It's so easy for them to get away with murder. They do it all the time. Uh, almost every day, there's another body cam video footage of a cop. Recently in my area, I'm in the Palm Springs area near San Bernardino, where there was a cop shooting. There was a girl who went missing, kidnapped victim, uh, presumed to be kidnapped by her father, who also killed the mother, and the cop shot the kid. The kid ran out of the truck that she was in with her dad as the, there was a shootout going on, and she was running to safety, running to the cops, and as she was running unarmed to the cops, she was gunned down by the police. And in this movie, there's a similar situation. There's a similar situation where somebody is running to the police, f escaping the, the, ish, the, the, the bad scenario that they're in, trying to escape to the protective uh, aspects of the police, trying to save themselves, and uh, the, the police fire on them. So this movie touches on a lot of things that actually happen with police departments, especially in the United States. I obviously don't have experience and not, you know, privy to the news and things going on in other places of the world. But it would, you know, it seems like France has very similar issues. And this community, not only is it seems to be like more lower income, which is a very common thing where lower income people tend to be picked on, but also uh, it seems to be a very large Muslim community, which, you know, in America... After 9-11, Muslims were the, had the crosshairs on them as far as racial discrimination and attacks. Uh, during the pandemic, a lot of Asian people were being attacked and targeted still to this day. Uh, and in general, like kind of historically in America, the black communities uh, tend to be, you know, racially discriminated and attacked uh, more than anything. So, you know, because... Obviously, France, a little bit different history than us. Uh, they're seemingly, like, not, not a lot of this stuff is, like, on the nose, really plainly uh, told. But it seems like maybe Muslim communities are kind of the target of racial discrimination in, uh, in France. And that's what it seems like. Because there's, even during this movie, we see the funeral of the young kid. Like, people in this complex... Uh, trying to mourn the passing, the endless slaughter of a young child. Uh, and it gets interrupted by 
the the war that's breaking out between mainly mostly kids younger people and the police who of course the police are heavily armed using gas using uh pepper spray using uh sandbag rubber bullets you know use it militarized in very much the same way using very similar tactics that they use in the united states against kids that are for the most part unarmed like the kids in this movie they're using like fireworks to shoot at them they're using a lot of things to do what they can uh to fight because they're fed up they're tired of the police getting away with murdering people they're tired of the police getting away with dehumanizing maiming injuring murdering innocent people and probably tired of them getting away with it and uh so it's 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 got a lot of that frustration it's got a lot of that rage and you know it's a movie where you know you f- you see through the different brothers you see from different perspectives like you have the younger brother whose name is oh, what is his name uh Kareem I want to say he's got like longer hair he's the kind of the 20 year old maybe late teens early 20s brother who's kind of the ringleader the kind of leader of this rebellion against the police uh you see his perspective where he's like he's just tired of it you know he there's a moment where he's in his home washing off his hand because he got burned by one of the gas canisters and he's looking at the picture of his brother and that's where we first see how old this child was that was murdered by the police and you see him start to cry you you get that emotion because you don't know up until that point how old this brother was you have no idea and then of course you see it's a child which you know children get murdered by the police in america all the time like if you have a kid with a toy gun you should warn your child that the police will probably shoot you if they see you holding a toy gun. I mean, holding anything in your hands around police in America is invitation for them to end your life. Because all they have to say is, I thought it was a gun. I, I felt my life was in danger, so I had to endlessly, I had to needlessly slaughter this child. Uh, and it's just disgusting. And then you see the the kind of the middle brother i guess the next older brother uh abdel who is military he's kind of working with the cops but obviously his brother is the the head of this uh fighting against the police so you kind of see his journey he's kind of the main character in some ways because you see there's a major transition that happens in this movie that's like heartbreaking but also you know it's it it's it's just it's adds to the drama adds to everything in this movie and then there is the older brother who's kind of like a stepbrother it seems who is a drug dealer and he's trying to move his business out of the apartment complex because it's being you know invaded surrounded by police and he doesn't want his drug business to get found out so he's kind of got his own selfish reasons for trying to get out and also the police officer so you're seeing it from like kind of four different perspectives um and it's just non-stop it's action-packed it's so good uh and i would recommend the default setting on netflix is that it's dubbed in english i hate dubbing i i'm not a good reader i'm a slow reader subtitles are my achilles heel but i would much rather take my time having to pause the movie every other line to keep up with subtitles if only to get the real raw performances from these people so i switched it from dubbed to french which is the language it was performed in and then just turned on english subtitles which i would recommend that way because i mean first off not a lot of dialogue in this movie but at least you're getting the authentic performances of these actors as they're performing in this movie, which is like I, I you just don't get that with dubbing. It's just you don't get that same energy. Uh, so I would recommend watching this in French, putting on the English subtitles. But yeah, it's it's a I don't even know if I'm going to go into spoilers too much. Maybe I will. I would recommend this movie. It's an amazing movie. 
it's it, like action packed the social issues the end not a big fan I, I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor show head on over to inspireddisorder.com you can get t-shirts different artwork available different designs all on high quality materials in all the sizes there's also iphone cases made of biodegradable material that's right this is not bad for the environment this is good for the environment so all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me sold by me head on over to inspireddisorder.com to support the ray taylor show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of the Ray Taylor show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. Let me talk about spoilers. So, spoilers from here on out. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, I'm going to talk about certain certain moments of this movie that will spoil things. Uh, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you know, come back later. Watch the movie. It's like an hour and a half long movie, I think. Maybe two hours. Uh, no, one, 140, so not bad at all. Uh, watch the movie, come back, and then listen to my opinion on certain aspects of it. Uh, because, you know, in the comments, you could tell me if you agree or disagree with certain things that I like or didn't like about what happens in this movie. Overall, I thought it was a great movie. I didn't think it was bad. I just, there's there's one aspect, especially at the end, that it felt like it was a, a cop-out, pardon the pun. But, uh... So, spoilers. So, a few, like, big moments in this movie. Obviously, the big turn with Abdel and his brother. Abdel is trying to, so they end up kidnapping the, the cop. And Abdel goes in. He's, like, working with the cops. He got himself out. The cops let him go. He was, like, detained. He was handcuffed. They, they uncuffed him because they want his help. They know his brother is kind of leading the, the charge uh, on the other side. And you see now he's kind of playing both sides. And they're asking him to go in because they just kidnapped one of the, the feds. We're going to try and invade. And they got held off and one of the, the cops uh, got taken and is now being held hostage. They want the names of the cops or they'll kill this hostage. So Abdel goes in to try and stop the situation before it gets worse. Tries to go in and get the cop out. And one thing that happens, well, first off, he goes, he knows where he's being held, right? Doesn't tell the cops, just sneaks in on his own to go where he's being held because they shot the video. He knows where that is uh, because he lives there. He knows the, the complex and on his way out, when they are running to freedom, I predicted it, this was going to happen because it happens all the time. It literally just happened in real life where somebody is running to the cops for protection, quote unquote. And the cops take that as a threat of their lives, their precious little fragile snowflake lives as being threatened that they fire upon this cop that's trying to run to safety which i thought was hilarious i'm glad this movie had that aspect of it because it was predictable because that's what would happen uh so they can't run to safety so they're kind of in a bind right they can't escape these kids that want to kill him because the cops will shoot him and they can't stay there because obviously the kids will want to kill him so they go to where the older brother is, the drug dealer brother, is trying to dig his way out. I don't really know exactly one of them's digging. I don't know if it's just to bury evidence uh, or he's trying to dig his way out, but they're digging a giant hole, but they're trying to get out. They're, they don't want, the, obviously, the cops to be involved. They're, they're like a third party that doesn't want to be involved with everything that's going on as well. And they hide in this little garage area that they're all in. But the scene where Kareem, I'm pretty sure it's Kareem, the younger brother with the long hair, and he knows where they are, 
he goes to them and he's like, got his Molotov cocktail. And he's like, I will, I don't care. You're my brother. I don't care. You're on the other side. You're helping the cops out, right? They killed our brother. They killed the child that was alive a day ago who was related to us, who was a child. They killed him. And now they're trying to cover it up. And I don't know if at this point over the news, like we get some exposition through news broadcasts that are going on. At one point, the news starts saying that it's, it's, pre- it's presumed that it wasn't the police on the video, that it was actually far-right extremists uh, that were the cause of this murder, which is something the police would do to not take blame instead of wanting to out one of their officers they would rather just blame it on some other group right they don't want to take responsibility for the fact that they killed a child which i didn't believe but they're trying to run that narrative the news is trying to push that narrative and kareem is there trying to get this their hostage out and is threatening to burn them out and when that when the cops show up, it's just like so brutal. Like you know, like he lights the Molotov cocktail, and the cops coming approaching from behind him, telling him to drop it. And you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen, and it's not going to be good. Because I like this character, right? There's a lot. Maybe uh, you know. I don't know. The at that age, I would be one of the kids in a tracksuit saying fuck the police now that i'm older it's like okay you know i i don't know i don't know how i would act if i was in the middle of that but obviously i agree with him you know (laughs) the little brother got killed by the video shows police officers shooting him and it wouldn't be the first this is like a common thing police officers do so it's not like out of the scope of possibilities that the cops would have killed the child and then also tried to cover up the fact that they killed the child But you know what's going to happen in that moment. And when he goes to throw the Molotov cocktail at these cops, which obviously that's what he's going to do, and then he gets shot, and then it blows up, and then he's on fire, and then the brother runs out. It's, like, so dramatic. Such, like, a, like, heart-wrenching moment, right? The brother gets him. They put him out with the fire extinguisher, brings him into that area, the garage area, and he's dead. And it's, like, there's this... It's like such a brutal moment because now two of his brothers are dead, right? One needlessly assuming by the cops, which this older brother is helping out, right? So he knows on some level he knows his younger brother, uh, other younger brother, Kareem, was justified in a lot of ways for doing what he's doing and trying to rally the troops and all that. And now the cops not only potentially killed his young young brother killed his another young brother but also tried to shoot at him and the cop as they were trying to go so now the cops have attacked them three times and did two of the lives of his brothers and there's the turn that the brother the older brother has that abdel has and it's like holy shit right so you don't expect that i didn't expect it i didn't expect his turn But it makes sense where he's like, okay, fuck this. Like I've half of my brothers are more than half. Two out of three of my brothers are now dead. One, I know for sure I watched the police shoot him. Now, actual self-defense in that one, I guess. You know, he was going to throw a Molotov cocktail on them. But the child, his young, young brother that died, not self-defense in any way, just needless slaughtering of a child. And he, that turn that he has is, like, amazing. It's like, holy shit. Like, that's where the movie gets even even deeper. It digs his claws into you even deeper. And then you see him kind of... You see that Sebastian, this guy who's, like, seemingly, you know, mentally challenged, whatever. And they're trying to protect him because of that. He ends up becoming, like, he's, like, actually this master of disaster kind of guy, which was kind of amazing. <laughs> Where he's, like, just effortlessly knows how to get into the safe, effortlessly knows what he's going to do, blowing up all these things. Uh, but then the end, the very end of this movie, 
when you see what actually happens, when you see that it was actually the far right group dressing up in police combat attire, filming themselves killing the kid, and then you see them run into the van and they go and burn the uniforms in the, the forest. It's like, I mean, it kind of lets the cops off the hook because they didn't kill the kid. But also, the only reason that that was believed to have happened is because the police do actually regularly kill people for no reason. For very, like, fabricated reasons by the police. So after watching this whole movie where, like, the whole time it's like, of course the cops are lying. They don't want to give up their, their people. They don't want to accept responsibility for ending this life. Because in most instances, that's true. To make it kind of this conspiracy that far-right activists would frame the police is kind of a bummer. Because it, also, it kind of, in some ways, emboldens people who are conspiracy theorists to kind of justifies their belief in like, oh, it's all fake. Like, whatever narrative they can creatively come up with to not have their side take responsibility is, is it's kind of a bummer that it was realized in this movie. But let's take a little break from the show to promote I Have Inspired Disorder Plus. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist that you want to support. $5 a month is not much, less than a price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A lot of people would probably say, yeah, Inspired Disorder Plus, people can go, and for $5 a month or $50 for the year, you get access to all of the old podcasts that I've ever done, like 10 different podcasts, hundreds of podcast episodes. You also get access to like special deals, so if you do want to collect my artwork, you get discounts on stuff. Watch this show binge the full week ad free for five dollars a month like you get benefits for the five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year so it's not like you're just donating five dollars there's something you get something for that would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support a lot of people would probably say yeah head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an inspired disorder plus member today and now let's get back to the show Overall, I still thought it was good. And even the fact that it was far-right groups, I mean, that's another thing in, in the U.S. Not only is it the police killing innocent people, but far-right groups in the United States are responsible for the majority of domestic terrorism. You know, these school shootings, mass shootings, church shootings, uh, massage parlor shootings... Uh, abortion clinic bombings like these like white supremacists white nationalists christian nationalists far-right groups uh, are responsible during the george floyd protest the majority of destruction was caused by far-right extremists trying to frame black lives matter in a lot of the destruction a lot of the looting a lot of the the property damage so it's you know And then they also, it's kind of funny in the U.S., those same far-right groups, like there's a lot of spray paint vandalism that I've seen online, uh, like churches being tagged up by what they say are Antifa or Black Lives Matter. But it's like clearly they're fake because they don't know, like they, they're just, they're so consumed with propaganda that they don't even know what somebody on the side of Antifa or Black Lives Matter would actually spray paint if they were going to vandalize something. Like there was a church recently that was vandalized and it had BLM, it had uh, Antifa, and they always confuse the anarchy symbol to mean uh, Antifa, so they used the A. I mean, they actually did the A correctly for once, but they used that A for Antifa, which they're not related. That symbol doesn't represent Antifa. That's an anarchy symbol. Uh, they had 666, which, for me, if I was going to vandalize a church, the only things I would put on this church would be definitely the 666, which was the only thing of all of the things painted. Oh, and then woke up. 
W-O-K-U-P, which nobody, the, the right is the one that uses the term woke. They refer to us as ro- woke, all this stuff. So we don't refer to ourselves as woke. If I was going to vandalize a church, 666, pentagrams, I would put all the things that they're afraid of, which is like devil stuff. So 666, pentagrams, you know, I, I might refer to the fact that priests and preachers and leaders of churches generally are the most uh, notable for committing rape against children. You know, I'd, I'd put something on there like stop raping children, you know. those devil stuff and then children because it's like oh scared i don't believe in the devil because i don't believe in god but i know they are scared of it so i would put all the things that they are scared of if i was going to vandalize i wouldn't put woke up i wouldn't put pigs (laughs) on a church because pigs is like an old timey thing for cops not having to do it's just it's just sad how bad they are at vandalizing their own property, trying to act like they're martyrs, trying to act like they are victims by spray painting their own buildings. And it's just, they're all bad. They are all bad. They are all so blatantly fake. So, you know, anyway. Uh, But anyway, back to this movie. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, that passing of the torch, pardon the other pun, moment of when the one brother dies and the other one like changes sides going from trying to help the police to just taking over his brother's duties as leading these, these people. The end is kind of beautiful in some ways where it's like, he's kind of just given up. Like the cops never give him the name. He doesn't end up killing the guy probably made him hearing impaired, but he's just kind of, given up laying down in what I believe to be his brother's bedroom as like ash comes come flying in. It looks like snow, but I'm pretty sure it's ash because there are protests everywhere. Fires going on everywhere. So it's, I would assume ash pouring in kind of beautiful. Like it almost looks like snow and everything blowing up. You see Sebastian walking through the hallway because he's rigged everything up because he's, he ended up being the scariest person in the uh (laughs) like to let him off the leash is the the scariest uh aspect of what happened but you know i i really did enjoy this movie it was uh, i mean it's brutal but also based in a lot of real things that are happening a real struggle that's happening between uh marginalized groups marginalized communities and the police uh the constant police brutality that's happening the constant uh lives that are lost uh by the police who never get charged never are held responsible for the damage they cause to human life uh they are very protected And unless something garners a lot of press, a lot of news, which rarely happens because the news generally puts out whatever the police say, um, it's just a shitty situation. And they are funded more than anything. You know, they are one of the most funded organizations aside from the military in the United States. I don't know about France, but. And a lot of their funding goes to cover lawsuits that they are constantly having to settle because they cause so much damage to lives, to families, and it's uh, it's disgusting. It's abs- it's inhuman. It's absolutely inhuman. How much money? And they all they do their their job is to fill private prisons. Their job is to turn human beings into modern day slaves, for the smallest thing that they can somehow fabricate they don't stop crimes they don't prevent crime uh in a lot of cases they cause crime and uh you know if you're wondering if i am anti-cop i am very much anti-cop i they they do not improve life at all they are terrorists in my opinion and this is a movie about these kids fighting against terrorists fighting against government funded terrorists um, and they may have been wrong about the situation that sparked 
the war, but, you know, the tension was there. The, the police were responsible for that tension existing. So just because the, the police weren't responsible for this, the singular act that kind of uh, broke that tension and sparked the rebellion, it's, you know, they still have the responsibility. They're still held responsible for that tension being there in the first place. You know, anyway, I thought it was an amazing movie. Gorgeous, well shot. I love long shots and the way this one was done. So beautiful. Uh, like, I don't even know. I, I, while watching this, I'm like, how did they even do this? How did they make this look so clean? Cause there's like crazy, the camera's like flying around effortlessly and it's it's so amazing uh so anyway check it out it's on netflix athena i recommend watching it in french putting on the english subtitles don't watch it dubbed obviously if you have to watch it dubbed but it's gonna take away it's not gonna be as good of a movie if you watch it dubbed watch it in french read the subtitles not a whole lot of dialogue a lot of action a lot of things going on you won't be distracted by reading trust me uh, but check it out. It's amazing. I loved it. Athena. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you wake, wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.